Okay, so for the last topic of today, we've gone on for quite a while and I wanted to get your thoughts on the youth and the youth potential, the youth power. And my guidance counselor, shout out to you, you she gave me this book that's called Youth Power. It's mm-hmm. by a Ghanaian, his name is Yao Pebi. And basically in the book is talking about the potential of the youth and the fact that most of the youth of today they don't really realize that potential. They don't see that potential. They don't know. It's like mm-hmm. that saying, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. Right, right. So it's like, how do you think we could solve that problem of bringing the knowledge to the youth? And how do you think the youth can solve today's problems? Well, first of all, the, the most powerful movements in the world have always been by a convening, a group of convening youth at any point in time in our world and youth could have meant up until you know the late 20s but it hurts me to to know that your peer group doesn't understand the power of who you are I I mean clearly I believe in the movement I literally work for one I'm surrounded by millennials every single day I literally do this for a living and I do it because I'm inspired by it. And um, wow, it is, it's amazing to me because when you all put your mind to something and you gather, whether you gather in silence or in protest, um, whether you gather you know, on your keyboards or with signs in your hands, we're listening. And I want your community, your peers, your friends, your listeners to know that the world is in need of all that you all have to do and all that you all are bringing. And if you don't do it, we've talked about the dangers of what could happen if you don't do this. This is the one time you're going to hear me say, even if you don't study engineering, okay, Mm -hmm. if you don't gather, if you don't convene, if you don't take seriously the assignment that is on your lives, then all of the things that we've been talking about today, however many ways this conversation gets chopped up, it all boils down to the world has problems, technology is solving them, and if you all don't come together to help fix the technology, the problems will be solved by someone that doesn't have your good intentions in mind. And so I believe strongly in you. Maybe maybe we need to do a better job, meaning the older generation, of listening and reminding you. I don't know. I'm going to ask Tristan a question. <laughs> what do we need to do differently? Mm-hmm. Because... If you all don't feel the relevance of your power, I wonder if it's because we're not telling you or showing you or reminding you. So what would you want me to take back to my peers and tell them? I think this boils down to exposure. I think with the youth in general, most of the people... They, they look at a problem in a certain way, in one specific way. And maybe how the older generations could help solve that problem is telling the person that you can't only look at this in this way. There are other ways to go about it. There's, I'm trying to remember, um, let me see, what, what is it? It's a quote from Nietzsche. Mm-hmm. And he said that, for it is not because things are difficult that we do not do, but it's because we do not do that things are difficult. Oh, wow. And so it's like that that paradigm alone, most of the people in my youth group, in my group in general, just you look at it and like, it's difficult, I can't do it. But maybe what the older generation could show the youth is that it's not because it is difficult that you're not doing, but it's because you're not doing that is difficult, you see. So it's like, mm-hmm. I think I strongly believe that if the older generation can kind of push the younger generation, not really push, more like pull, pull them into that paradigm where they can believe that it's not just the problem alone 
it's my response to the problem that will dictate the outcome so that's what i think <laughs> i love that I and so. i'm going to do my best to make sure that i share that mm. Mm. but no and and to your your peers your counterparts your generation that is listening um we do believe in you sometimes we have to have a lot more patience in the process but we do believe in you we believe um in the fact that you all have a unique version or a unique way of expressing your hope, um, a unique way of fighting, a unique way of believing and persevering. And I think what we should know together is that you may think differently, your listeners may think differently, my peer group thinks differently, but it doesn't make it wrong. It's just different. And so if we come together and listen to each other, and you ask some questions, and I give a little bit of my perspective, and then I ask some questions, and you give me some of your perspective, then we're doing everything that we just talked about for the past however long we've been talking today. And together, we're going to be able to solve that better. But what we can't do is be against one another, because the world is already doing that. They're already against us. Let's, let's find a safe space and come together and, and try and do this better. Yeah. So now uh, let me just, so there was this tradition that we kind of started in this podcast and this okay. show. This is the part where I ask you, that's your <laughs> not, tradition. Not, not Send necessarily. Your vote in if that should be the new tradition and I will come back and interview Tristan. So basically I got this concept from a previous, from a podcast that I watched. It's called Diary of a CEO. And in that podcast, basically, the previous guest asks a question for the new guest to okay. answer. Oh, yes. I've, I've heard of this before. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you a question for your next guest. Yes. There okay. you go. And then I'll ask you the question from the previous guest. Ooh, okay. Happened. And I, th so the way this is working, if I'm right, like, I have no idea who your next guest will be. No. Whether they're an older person, younger person, business mm -hmm. person. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. The question that I have for them mm. is, what, oh boy, I have so many questions. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I want to know, who is a person that they would love to meet? And when they meet that person, what would they ask them? Okay. Okay. That's the question I'll have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the question that's my previous guest. Okay. He asked the previous guest, just for context, he founded this very, very big basketball event in Ghana. It's called Jellyfest. Okay. And he's the founder, the CEO of Jellyfest. So he just very cool guy. He's, okay. Yeah, shout out to you. But I'm cool too, right? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I was just going to say. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so he asked the question, what's are you doing right now to put your family name out there so that whenever or wherever you go, they know who you are and they know what your family means? That is such a good question. And let me tell you why I love that question. Tristan, I love legacy. I, when I turned 50, something like, something happened. And I think it started for, I lost my father. My father passed away. But then when I turned 50, there was this thing about legacy. And I was just like, all the questions I need answers to that I didn't know to ask. So I started like rounding up my aunties and everybody like, I need to know this. I need to know that. Like, what did my father like, you know, where to school? I don't know anything. So I'm loving the legacy question. And um, so what I'm doing my family name means as much to me as the name of God stamped on my life as a Christian. So I'm a child of God. I'm a Uzel. And um, what I'm doing is um, getting my house in order and keeping my house in order. So... There's so many different ways to do that, Tristan. There is 
a lifestyle of righteousness that I'm committed to as a woman of faith. So I want my reputation to be one that my father used to always say, you make sure they don't say that about Jay's daughter. My dad's name was Jay. So that was his way. You know, in church we're taught, you know, to ensure that people that speak of us speak well. So it's important to me that I shore up my reputation. Sometimes that means as a leader, I do that by, I can't go all the places I want to go. I can't always do the things that everybody else is doing. So I'm mindful of where I am and what I do. I'm also, um, I pour into my nieces and nephews. I have 13 nieces and nephews and great nieces and nephews. And I do my best to pour into them. I'm going to take some advice you gave me earlier and try and listen to them more and partner with them more. And um, so I, I am doing my best to serve them and to set them up for a future. I've done something at my university called an endowment, where I've started an endowment at North Carolina A&T, which is, um, a f will, will fund a lot of activities at the school. So I've been fortunate from a financial perspective to be able to give money back to my school so that someone else can have the experiences hopefully that I've had or even better. And then, um, you know, I've done, I believe that I continue to do the right thing in terms of investing, studying, investments. I've recently worked with my financial advisor to um, to do a scrub of my financial portfolio of, of some things that are outside of what I believe as a Christian. So there were some investments that I didn't, that I had, not intentionally, but they were in companies that that maybe aren't in line with my belief. And so I'm um, cleaning up my portfolio. Um, I'm writing. I hope to leave stories behind for my family members. And um, I had an honor of doing a documentary where I've been recording uh, elders in my family. And um, putting. I've put this thing together and played it recently for my cousins and um, for us to, to stay on top of it and to stay connected. And in that story, um, our elders talk to us and tell us what they expect from us as cousins and family members. And so I'll hold on to that for posterity and hope that we'll all be able to do that. So I've tried to do those things, watch my reputation, honor God, do right with, with what he's given me, serve my family, serve the community that served me, and um, tell the stories. Okay. So for the viewers, the listeners, everybody, if you want to find Miss Yuzel, where do they okay. look? So you can find me on LinkedIn at Janine Uzel. It's spelled J-A-N-E-E-N-U-Z-Z-E-L-L. -E 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 -L. You can follow me on Instagram at Janine Uzel, and you can follow me on Twitter at Janine U. Okay, thank you. It will be plugged inside the description, maybe on the video. Whatever it is, please follow her. Message her, let her know that you came sure. from this podcast and you enjoyed what happened. If you have any questions you want to ask her about and um, about Nesby, about anything that has to do with black excellence, youth excellence, anything whatsoever, feel free to ask her and let her know that I sent you. So that <laughs> yes, yes, please let me know. <laughs> but I love that you just use black excellence because we're moving into our 50th year, and that is literally our theme: black engineering excellence. Oh, wow, <laughs> I love that. See, we're right on brand, sir. I yeah. love it. <laughs> yes, so. If you guys are also enjoying what we're doing on the channel, make sure to follow the channel Empower on Spotify, on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram too if you're enjoying what we're doing. T underscore C Juma, that's my username. You see all my socials, everything else there if you're enjoying whatever it is going on. Feel free to also send me people that you just want me to interview if you think that maybe they may be interesting for the channel as well. If you have any questions as well and maybe any topics you want to cover in future videos, I'm all ears. And without further ado, I believe in you. We believe in you. Go and make the world a better place. Don't just live life, but thrive. Yeah, oh, it. I love that. Don't just live <laughs> life, thrive. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> yeah. I, uh...